Texas at TCU. Texas at TCU. Um, you know, Andy, as you go through these, the lines are so big this week. Mm -hmm. At least these Monday ones. Like, is it kind of like Super Dog Saturday? Like, what are we setting up for here? I, I think so. And so there are a couple of big like this one's not that favorites. bad, but there's a lot of big ones this week. Well, it's a it's a it's a road favorite that's almost double digits. So like right in a conference game, that is not normal. Now TCU's been bad. I admit that. They they, they look better against Texas Tech last week. They've had they had kind of the mini buy because they played mm -hmm. on Thursday. Uh, but the Texas thing's really interesting to me. We had Bobby Burton on yesterday, and he said that if Malik Murphy continues to turn the ball over the way he has, like they may have to go to Arch Manning if Quinn Ewers can't play. Steve Sarkeesian said Monday that, that Quinn's day to day, but I am very curious about that because I would want to make sure Quinn's ready for Iowa State if he can be. Right. But do you go to Arch if, because I mean, <laughs> what Malik did in the fourth quarter was dangerous if you didn't already have a pretty big lead. Correct. And, you know, it's, it was funny. I remember there was a moment in the fourth quarter when Gus Johnson's like, maybe it's time to put in Arch. And Joel Klatt was like, whoa, 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 chill out. Like, this is not the time to put in Arch Manning. He's never played a snap in a college game. But Texas was living a little dangerously. I think Malik Murphy gave K-State a chance in that game. And honestly, Andy, the first thing that comes to mind for me with this game is, is 2021. You remember when Baylor was 7-1? Mm -hmm. and one, They were number 12 in the rankings. They went to Fort Worth on a week that Gary Patterson had just been fired against a TCU team that was four and four and had nothing the to Chandler lose. Morris game. Chandler Morris was amazing. They pulled off a stunner as a seven point dog. Now I don't know if TCU like has the juice this week to do that. I mean, they've lost four of their last five. They lost by 38 to K state. Like it's going to take an amazing effort for four quarters, but that is the scary thing is like, will Malik Murphy give TCU a chance to like give some opportunities here that, uh, that maybe Josh Hoover and, and the frogs can capitalize on. And then suddenly you're right back where you were a week ago. Well, and the thing is, the idea is to redshirt Arch. And I, I know everybody is looking at Arch Manning like a typical five-star quarterback. Don't do that. They want to redshirt him. He wants to redshirt. That's important. Mm -hmm. But if you think you can have Quinn back for Iowa State, you could play Arch if you have to. And then have hope that Quinn is upright through Iowa State and Texas Tech. And then you can have Quinn for the rest of the seat. You can use Quinn, at, or I'm sorry, use Arch the rest of the way if you need to. And he still only plays four games. Now, last year they let everybody who played the postseason have a mulligan for the postseason. So if they were going to do that, you could just play him now and he'd be fine. Sure. But this is also like the time when you also need to like inject as much confidence into Malik Murphy as possible yeah. so that he doesn't kind of slide from this moment forward, because it's easy to kind of look at that game and just say like, Oh no, maybe Malik Murphy's just not ready. And it's like, well, that's not really a position Texas is in to like, like they, he has to be ready. Like he just has yeah. to go. And and I, I don't think it's, uh, I, you know, we'll see it's early in the week, obviously like what is the actual status of Quinn Ewers? Can you do like an emergency thing there? No idea. But um, certainly like, Malik Murphy needs the practice reps. He needs to like be going into this TCU game feeling like he's got a real handle of this offense. But you're right, Andy. I mean, at some point in time, Arch Manning has to get live bullets because even if you're saving those four games, like, dude, we're in we're in November now. Like, we're running out of time to use them. Yeah. Here's my other part of this. Texas would have beaten T would have beaten Kansas State. Like when Texas was up 27-7 mm -hmm. against Kansas State, if they'd never thrown the ball again. I think they actually would have ext extended the lead Probably and so. run out the clock. Like they would have won that game 34 to seven. And if they. No, if Jonathan they Brooks had a fumble too. Like the other people are responsible right. for, for that. Right. Yeah. It's, not, it's not just on it. And Will Howard did an amazing job when you gave him the ball off takeaways. Right. Awesome job of capitalizing. But that that's what comes with it. If you're Malik Murphy, you've got yeah. all these great players around you and you've got to be just got to be good enough and you just can't throw it to the other guys yeah and i think what tcu will do what what joe gillespie will do he, he saw i mean the book's out now basically as soon as k-state took the extra guy out of the box and put him in coverage so they could mix up coverages it became a problem now texas could still run the ball so if i'm texas i just run it down their damn throats and i will say texas covers running it down their damn throats 
I'm I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take the I'm, I'm taking the points on a bunch of these today, buddy. I, I just Ooh. I have to. I have to. It's just too it's Love just it. too many. I, I certainly I could see Texas kind of show up pissed off and you know really uh really put a big one together here. Um TCU needs this one. They're in a tough spot. It's it's interesting that it's a night game because a lot of times Texas has played that that noon kick in Fort Worth and it's a very sleepy start and then you're like uh oh they are in trouble. Um, but I, I I think Texas will win, but TCU is capable of keeping this close. I, I also I say this knowing that TCU shut down Bijan and Roshan last year. That they did. I remember that. I, I I'm still confident. CJ Baxter, 407 baby Orlando. Let's go. <laughs> Let us uh, let us move. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.